Hello, this is a quick video to show you the exercise that we conducted at the local elementary school here. Uh, we used the MIT App Inventor to create a simple app and I'm just going to demonstrate that for you uh, for students who are not able to attend. So on the screen here we have the MIT App Inventor screen and uh, we will just create a new project here and uh, the only thing I need is to sign in with some Google credential. So I just create a project here. And it is going to bring me uh, a screen where I can create the app. So I can drag and drop the different controls. And then the only other part that I need to worry about is the blocks here. So right now we are in the designer screen where we do all of the how our app is going to look. And then when we click on the blocks, this is where we have all of the programming done. So if you look at the designer, we'll keep this app really simple. And, you know, we talked in the class, this is a very simple app designed to uh, help anyone who's driving. So if somebody uh, receives a text message while they're driving, it will read out that text message and then also respond with a standard message for them. So. I'm going to keep this app really simple. Let's just get ourselves a text box. And this is the place where we will, you know, type the message that we want to respond with. Let me also get a button. And uh, so this will be our very simple UI. And in addition to that, I also want to get uh, some connectivity options here. Uh, so in this case, actually, instead of the connectivity, let's also look at the social uh, options here. So I want the texting piece here and notice here that since this is not a, a visual control or a non-visible control it gets dropped right here and let me also find one other control that I want I want the speech to text as well so let's just bring that as well and it is also a non-visual control so it shows up here okay so this will be our very simple screen here I can go in and change this to say save so that it is very clear what we're trying to do. And this is where we will type in the message that we want our users to know. Well, let, we can just say we'll call you back later or something like that, okay? So this is the visual part. Let's just very quickly do the programming. So I've clicked on the blocks. And by virtue of adding these controls, you can see under screen, all of these are available. So let's just click on texting and when I click on texting it tells me all the things that are available to me so when I clicked on texting I get here some let's just pull this one and just talk about this so by virtue of having my texting control I was able to bring this into my programming blocks and then here there's a very simple programming block which says when I receive a text message I can do things here in this white box so I can, uh, let's just say, I can, uh, you know, read the message that, that came in. So let's just get this block here and we will click that block here. And you can hear that clicking so sound, which means it makes sense to add it here. So when a text message arrives, we are just going to simply read that text message. Now, notice here that we still have a warning sign here because, you know, one of these blocks is not connected here. So even though we are saying that call text to speech should be there, we don't know what to speak out. So it turns out that the message when it arrives, we already get the message that was sent in as part of the text. Let's just get that and let's just get that message text here and then let's click it to this block here, okay? And our warning goes away. So a message has arrived, we have read it to our user and the next thing we also want to do is we want to send them a message back. So we will send them a message right here. Let's just get this. At this point, we have read the message and then we want to reply. But you know, this is not quite complete because it does not know which number we are going to send that message back and what exactly we're sending it back. So let's also get the number. Turns out that the number is available for us here. So let's just get the number uh, as well and the text. Actually, I need to do one other thing before I get that in here. Let's also uh, click on texting and, and get how do we set the phone number. 
So set the texting message. I want this and I also want sec set the texting number. Okay, let's just get these two and we will put them right above this here and set the phone number above here as well. Uh, well, I, I got a wrong block here. Let me just uh, delete this block. What I really wanted was setting the text number. So I wanted this one instead. We'll get it here, put it right here. At this point, we have two warning messages because we have not told what number to set and what message to set. And let's just get the number here and let's just get the phone number that was sent to us. So we will send the message back to the phone number from the incoming text message. And the text, remember, we are going to send back whatever the user tells us. So let's just go get the text box. And hopefully you can see text box uh, text here somewhere, right here. And let's just get this one as well. And sometimes it's hard to drag, but once I get hold of this, at this point, I have removed all the error messages. Okay, so very simple program. Message comes in, we read out the message to the user, then we grab the incoming phone number, we set the phone number here, we grab the text from the text that the user typed, we set it as the message, and then we do a send message, okay? So at this point, we are quite ready to test this app, but for that I need an Android phone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build this app here, and I'm going to, you know, make sure everything works fine. And at this point, it's going to give me a QR code. So let's just get ourselves and looks like our app was indeed successful. So we should get our QR code here in a moment. While it is doing that, let me also show you something else. I'm running a WebEx session here so you can see what's happening on my screen. So when the app does indeed load up on my Android phone, you'll be able to see it here. So let's just go back and looks like our QR code is ready. At this point, I'm going to go to my phone and launch the MIT app and then simply scan this QR code. So once this comes up here, so I'm scanning the QR code. And momentarily you will see, let me just go back and show you what's happening on my phone. My app is getting installed, looks like app is installed. Let's just open this app and just as we created it, we have the save button and we have the text box. Let's write some message here. I am driving. So, so this is the message that will be sent out to the user. Okay, now let's do one thing. I'm going to send myself a text message from another computer here and hopefully we will see this application in action. So let's open up another app here that will send me a text message. So I have another app. Basically I'm using Skype to send myself a text message and let's send out the text message here and let's just wait and see if that message arrives, our app does indeed pick it up. Should be happening any second now. Plus one two four oh four two one three nine one seven. Hello Vishvas, can you talk now? Okay, it is asking me if I want to respond. Well, this is just because it sees there's there an extra charge. And if I do this, and now whatever message that I had typed, in fact, I can quickly show you this. Let me go into my text messages. And you can see here that we got this message, hello Vishwas, and then we automatically respond, responded with, I am driving, okay? So this concludes our very simple demonstration of building an app, which is actually useful. And uh, I hope you can you know, take this very simple way of building the apps right here. We built the app very simply here, and there's a lot more you can do. You can call a web service, you can save that data. So sky's the limit, use your imagination and build apps for yourself. Bye-bye.